Mike. Mike, you ready? Yeah. 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 Are you rolling? Yeah, we're rolling. Say hi to him, guys. What's up, insiders? How are you guys doing, man? We're going to go over some really important things that Chris and I talked about. We're going to go over six tips to get ready for the winter time because it's coming up right away. First thing is heat your epoxy up. Let me show you what we do. So when we're going to work with any epoxy, whether it's a two-gallon kit, half-gallon, uh, here, here's our shipping. Everybody say hi to the insiders, man. Hey, guys. Hey. You guys aren't even excited, man. What's <laughs> up, man? <laughs> What's up, guys? All right, Chris, we'll go back here to where we film normally. All right, so when we heat the epoxy up, we simply put it in front of a radiant heater. We'll turn that on and we let it heat up for about a half an hour just so it's nice and liquid and it's consistent. That's key is consistency. You wanna work with the same temperatures all the time, whether it's summer or winter. So if you can get it nice and warm, it really flows and performs best. That's key. All right, let's go over the next one. So we talked about heating it up. That's step one. Step two. Use a thermometer, it gives you more accurate results. Get a humidity thermometer, I think we got ours at Walmart. Super inexpensive, very reliable, and then you can keep your room up to temperature and not worry that you're not gonna cure properly. Uh, let's go with number three. Oh, I gotta explain this, this is, this is important. We actually have some funny stories behind this, but when you're gonna mix the epoxy, uh, and you get it full of epoxy, especially in the winter, and if you haven't heated it up enough, it creates a lot more friction because it's thick. So when you go to mix it, make sure you're holding that bucket, especially a small bucket like this. If you get that full and you just start mixing, that's gonna grab and whip, and I've done that more than once. So be careful on that. Let's see, what's our next tip? Yes, hold the bucket, okay? Hold tight. Uh, number, number whatever we're on, torch more often. So especially when you're doing dark colors and things like that, when you torch with a propane torch, you're not trying to get everything out all at one time. You're, you're, you're literally going to torch it out, let it rise again, torch it again, and do this as many times as you need. If the epoxy is a little colder, it's going to take a little longer. If you have a smaller batch, you entrain more air. So just be patient. Don't sit there in one section and really try to get it all out at once, especially dark colors. That's where it shows that it's got some white fog in there. So simply torch it, walk away, torch it, walk away, torch it, walk away. Wait about five minutes in between. So if you're doing a really big project, when you start over there and you work your way over to this corner, usually you're ready for your next torching as soon as you're finished with this side. That's a pro tip. All right, let's go next here. No air movement. So if you don't want air movement, that means fans, HVAC, vents, um, also uh, you, you know anything blowing in that room, a, a draft from a window, things like that, shut the windows shut off the HVAC, get your room up to temperature. It's okay to have the heat going while you're working and, and doing your thing, but once you get it leveled out with your final torch, especially on that second clear coat, make sure you really, you really turn off all that air or else you're gonna get dips and divots and things like that in your pieces. Uh, finally, keep it warm. Okay guys, so when, uh, when you get it all set up, your, your job is perfect. You don't want to let the, the temperatures plummet and then have it cure below 60, 65 degrees. You want to keep it warm. Warmer is better. If you're going to air anyway, air on the side of warmth. How do you keep it warm without air movement? radiant heat. I hope this helps. I hope it helps you get ready for winter. Thanks a lot for all the comments, all the help, all the interaction on the Insiders group is phenomenal. Uh, if you haven't joined, guys, go see our Stone Coat Countertop Insiders group. Click join now and we're going to get you right on that and you will not believe what people are doing the first time using Stone Coat Countertop Epoxy. Hey guys, we're going to do this more often. Let us know in the comments below. Do you like this kind of content? Are you looking for these pro tips? I'm going to treat you just like I would if you're my buddy in my shop and you need to know how to be a pro. And until next time from Stone Coat Countertops, you got this. We'll see you soon.